Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Monthly favorites time, January favorites time. I am so happy that January is over. I don't know why, but this year, I just am not feeling winter. I got tired of winter, basically January 2nd hit and I was ready for spring. I know I'm jumping the gun, we're still a little bit away from that, but one month down of winter, a couple more to go. And the bright spot this month is I have some really good products to share with you guys. I only have eight products here. It's actually a pretty small little stash right here. And this month I actually have two misses for me. I don't often include misses or fails, but there were two things this month that kind of disappointed me a little bit. And I'll get into those at the end. But let's go ahead and jump into my favorites first. First off, I want to mention the Friendcation palette by Dose of Colors. I talked about this. What video did I mention this in? I think I did a haul video relatively recently where I talked about this palette. I use this this palette. I love this palette. I think it's such a great palette. I will say this though. I got this on sale for under $30. This palette retails for $55. I think that's a little bit pricey. If this palette was full price, I guarantee I would not have it in my collection. I don't even know right now if I lost it. I would want it back, but I'm not sure I would pay $55 for it. There's just something about spending that much money on an eyeshadow palette that makes me a little bit uneasy. I'm a makeup collector, but I'm also very budget conscious, and I just think that's a little bit pricey, even though I love this palette so much. I have a hard time recommending it because of the price tag. I just think that's a little bit steep, but I have been absolutely loving it. It definitely has been a favorite of mine this month, and I think the formula on this thing is absolutely stunning. I just love this thing. I am wearing this on my eyes today. I basically just have this color all over my lid with a little bit of these two mixed together in my crease and then a little bit of this on the inner part of my lid. There's still a couple of shades in here I haven't used yet. I haven't used the blue or the black yet but everything else in here I've used and I absolutely love. I think they're very wearable for every day and you can kind of amp things up or down depending on what colors you combine together and how much you use of each shade and how you use them. It's just a very versatile, fun, inspiring palette. Hey guys, so future editing Mandy hair. I realized I completely forgot to include mm -hmm. The Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry Palette in my favorites for January. This absolutely was a favorite of mine during this month. I mean, I did a whole dedicated video on this thing. I loved using this palette. I loved creating that video and I actually did use this even other days that I wasn't filming the looks for that video. So this definitely was a favorite of mine during the month of January. And the reason I forgot to include this is as I was going through my products and selecting the things I really love this month, this palette actually happened to be upstairs by my computer because I was kind of in the process of editing that video. So somehow I basically just momentarily forgot about this thing. Not sure how that happened, but this definitely needs to be included in my January favorites. So the next thing I have to share with you guys is a brow pencil. This is the ColourPop Brow Boss Pencil in the color Taupe. I love this thing. This is one of those very small brow pencils, kind of like the Anastasia Brow Wiz. This one is such a good one. I think it's such great quality. It cost me five bucks and I love the consistency of this thing more than anything. It's very nice and stiff, but it also doesn't take too long to build up product in your brows. It's very easy to fill out sparse areas and I love that this gives me a little bit more precision to my brows than my typical brow pencil, which is my e.l.f. very cheap brow pencil, which I still love that brow pencil. When I only have five seconds to do my eyebrows, that's the one I will reach for. But if I have a little bit more time and I want them to look a little bit more precise, this is the one I reach for and I absolutely love this. I wish I would have bought like six of these. I definitely will be buying more the next time I place an order on either Ulta or ColourPop's website. One more thing that was also featured in that haul is this also by ColourPop. This is their highlighter in Smoke and Whistles. I've been really enjoying using this lately. I love the color of this. It's a very soft kind of pink champagne. It looks very kind of icy and white, but when you apply this either with a finger, blend it out, or even with a brush, this just gives you such a beautiful, intense, but still somewhat soft highlight. It doesn't emphasize any texture on my skin. I really love the ColourPop Super Shock formula. I think it's really fantastic. I also love Flexitarian. This one's just a little bit softer of a color and a little bit less intense than Flexitarian. I really have been enjoying this one this month. Next up is a highlighter I've also been talking about a lot lately, but if we're talking about my favorite products for this month, this has to be included. It's the Makeup Revolution Champagne Liquid Highlighter. Liquid highlighter in the color champagne is probably a better way to word it. Love this stuff. I seriously cannot recommend this stuff enough. I've had this in my collection for nearly a year now, and for the first six months or so, I just, I didn't love it because I didn't quite know the best way to, to use this thing. And I again, I know I'm being kind of a broken record if you watch my other videos, but if you use your finger to apply this and just really kind of tap into the skin, it gives you such a beautiful, almost like a glossy 
highlight. It's so natural looking. It's so, so beautiful. It does have a tiny bit of glitter in it, but I mean, I'm talking like micro, micro, microscopic sized glitter. So the only way you would actually see that glitter on your skin is if you were outside in direct sunlight with a magnifying glass. It's really not very noticeable. It really just kind of blends into your skin. Looks very natural, very kind of glossy looking. It does not emphasize texture at all, which I love more than anything about this product. Another thing I love about it is it does set down. So anytime I use this, I always use it on the back of my hand first. And that little swatch on the back of my hand, if I don't actually go scrub it off, because when I wash my hands, I don't often wash the back of my hand. That thing will be on my hand all day long. And if it's on the back of my hand, most likely it's still on my cheeks as well. So I love the lasting power of this thing once it sets. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful highlighter. I think it would work on absolutely any skin tone, again, because it is kind of that sheer sort of glossy kind of formula. I love this stuff. So the last four things I have to share with you guys are all lip products, which I think is kind of funny because I'm pretty basic when it comes to the things that I put on my lips, but I do have some things that I've really been enjoying this month. First off is this little combination right here. So first is the Milani Color Statement Lip Liner in the color 04 All Natural. This has got to be one of my all-time favorite lip liners. It's such a perfect color. If you have medium to fair skin tone, this is the type of lip liner that would go with absolutely any lip color you pair it with. I love the consistency of these. They're very creamy, but they're not too creamy. They don't slide around. They stay in place pretty well, and they're just really easy to apply. So I've been using this a lot lately with just this gloss on top. My lips this month have been extremely dry. There have been a lot of days where I can't really wear anything but a gloss because my lips are so chapped and so dry. And this has been a lifesaver for me. This lip gloss is by Revlon. It's in the color Supernatural. It's just a very basic kind of, not milky, but just kind of like a basic sort of mauve light pink. It's just a very good semi-sheer gloss. It's very comfortable. It gives you just the right amount of glossiness to your lips. People don't often talk about these glosses. I know that they've been around for years and years and years, but I really love them, and I think they don't get enough love here. In fact, this one I've had in my collection for quite a while, and I just have recently pulled it back out this month and really been enjoying it. One more lip gloss that I've really been enjoying this month is Moonchild by ColourPop and Kathleen Lights. This is such a good lip gloss. Again, if you have medium to fair skin, this is a great just throw on your lips and head out the door type of gloss. Throw it in your purse to have something to put on. It has a good amount of color to it. If you see it right here, it does have quite a bit of pigment to it, but it's not like overly rich to where, you know when glosses are too thick and rich, you get that weird like gathering on the center of your lip. It doesn't do that for me. It's very comfortable. It has such a beautiful shine to it and it gives my lips just the right amount of color to where I can wear this all alone and still feel like my lips look really nice. And I also just really love the color of this one. I feel like it's the perfect mix of a little bit of beige, a little bit of peach, and a little bit of pink. It's just that like perfect nude color that goes with absolutely anything. And the last lip product that I have been absolutely loving is this one right here. This is from Ofra. This is the their liquid lipstick in the color Havana Nights. I got this in my BoxyCharm in January just about three or four weeks ago and I am absolutely in love with this color. Now this is a very deep kind of almost like a blackened cherry red. There's something about this red that even though it's super super intense and super deep it's not overly bright so it makes it a little bit more wearable. I don't know if that was a very good description of this color, but I just know that when I wear this color, there's something about this that makes me feel confident, even though it's a bold lip. Usually when I put a bold lip on, I like wearing bold lips, but sometimes I feel a little bit self-conscious in a bold lip, but I love wearing this color. I think it's just such a good color. It has the perfect amount of depth, perfect amount of richness, but it's not overly bright, if that makes sense. It's just very, very beautiful. It's a perfect winter shade, in my opinion, if you're wanting a statement lip. All right, guys, so last up, I have two kind of, I don't know if I'd call these fells. I feel like that's a little bit, that's a little bit harsh, but there are two products this month that I was a little bit disappointed in. First off, it's this brush right here. So I've been in the market for a bronzer brush for quite a while, and I picked this one up just kind of on a whim at Ulta. This is the Morphe M527. So the reason that I picked this one up is because the shape of it reminded me of what used to be kind of like my old kind of go-to bronzer brush. This is my old bronzer brush. This is from Coastal Scents. I love the shape and the density of this brush, but it does shed. And honestly, when a black brush sheds on your face, pretty much every time I use this brush, my husband will be like, you have a little black hair on your neck or on my 
like somewhere on my face or on my eye. The little hairs tend to get everywhere, which is kind of annoying. So I've been wanting to replace this for a while. So I saw this one at Ulta. I think it was like $15 or so. And the shape reminded me of that other one. It actually works really well at applying my bronzer. It's really, really soft. But what I don't like about it is one, it also tends to shed a little bit. Granted, I'd rather have a white hair on my face floating around than a black hair floating around on my face, but still, I would rather not have any hair floating around on my face. So I don't like that it sheds, and I also don't like, I don't know if you can see closely, but some of these hairs tend to kind of splay out, and it doesn't matter how many of them I pick or pick out, they tend to just keep splaying out everywhere, which is a little bit annoying, especially considering I haven't even washed this brush yet. And I'm really nervous about washing this thing, what's going to happen to it. So again, I'm just a little bit disappointed in this thing. I was kind of hoping this would be the answer to my bronzer brush prayers. Let me know if you guys have any bronzer brush recommendations. If you have one that is like the perfect shape that applies bronzer perfectly. I typically like my bronzer brushes to be a little bit more of like a paddle shape. I like them to be not too stiff, but also not too fluffy, if you know what I mean. But let me know if you guys have any recommendations because... Unfortunately, I am still on the lookout for a good bronzer brush. And the last thing I have for you guys that was a bit of a disappointment for me is the Lorac Pro Lash Pomade Mascara. This came in my BoxyCharm in the month of December, and I was really excited about this thing because I love the packaging of it. It's really, it feels really nice. It's really pretty and silver. I generally like most mascaras. There's a few that I love, but other than that, I like most mascaras because I think I have decent eyelashes. They're relatively long, they're relatively thick, and they're relatively curved. World. But there was something about this mascara that when I put it on my eyelashes, I almost felt like maybe something happened to my eyelashes overnight. Did they fall out? Did they shrink? Did they get flatter? Because this seemed to do the opposite of everything that I would want a mascara to do. It made it look like my lashes were very, very thin. It made them very short. And it also made them very flat. So this is a really, really wet mascara formula. And it's so wet that I actually left this like untwisted like this for three days to see if I could dry it out a little bit to see if it might actually work a little bit better because you know how some mascaras that are wet, you give them a few days or a few weeks and they get to that like perfect consistency. This thing has dried out a little bit, but it still doesn't work very well. I can't explain it. This is just not a very good mascara. I'm wondering if because this says it's a lash pomade mascara, if it does have some sort of growth factors or something in it, if that's kind of its main purpose. Honestly, guys, I'm not even sure that I would put this on to wear to the grocery store. Like, I'd rather just go out without anything on my eyelashes at all. It really is just, it's just not good. And that makes me so sad because I just assume that Lorac, I mean, they're a pretty high-end brand. I haven't tried a lot of things from them. I love their lip glosses. But I would just assume that it would be decent. And I just, I was really disappointed in this thing. Let me know if you guys have tried this out. I would imagine if there's someone out there that has lashes that are too long, too thick, and too curled, that they want to like tone them down a little bit, maybe this would be a good mascara for you. But honestly, does that person exist? Don't all of us want thicker, longer, more curled eyelashes. I don't know, I could be wrong, but this definitely was just a disappointment for me. All right, you guys, and that is it for my January favorites. Let me know if you guys have tried out any of these products. If you love them, if you don't, I'd love to know in the comments below. Also, I would love to know what your number one most reached for product was during the month of January. Let us know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel again today, for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. Colourpop Moonchild, you are not cooperating. Am I going to have to cut you out of this video? Cooperate. Oh yeah, here we go. Always the Moonchild, come on! Okay, Moonchild, you're laying down. Had it. Had it with you. Now it's not even about the thumbnail. Now I just am determined to not be beat by the stupid game that I created. Dang it.